Okay, welcome back to the channel. Now that fluke season is effectively over in the Northeast, I figure it's a good time to do a recap of my own fluke season, and later a general summary of how the season went for the wider flukehead community. For me, 2024 kicked off with the launch of my website cookingandfishing.com, starting with the virtual lesson on single jigging that I put together over last winter, followed by the spinner blade frenzy that frankly took me completely by surprise. Anyone who supported the channel by purchasing either of those products, thank you. Also, by merely watching these videos I upload to the channel, thank you. Twenty twenty four was also a year that saw jerk baiting for fluke explode. First with the feature article in On the Water magazine. Matt Hafner did a great job with that piece, by the way. Then followed by a less original interpretation by the Fisherman Mag, if I can put it that way. They do say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and if that's true, I feel very flattered indeed. Now this wasn't the biggest fish of the year, but it certainly gave me the best fight. Evergreen Xover, Steve 76, Vanquish 3000. The thing with a lot of these hard bait fish is you cannot horse them in. You have to fight them out. Oh, what the fuck? So if that fish came on a single jig, I would have had her on the sand in a quarter of that time. Small treble hooks are always a dicey proposition. Six, six and a half, 23 inch. Now, as you'll recall, I uploaded the first jerkbait fluke video back in 2021. And since then, I've been experimenting with other freshwater bass hard baits. The one that took over for me this year was the crankbait. Now this was my best fish of the year and she came off a tiny flat sided crankbait. Now definitely one of the highlights of the year was watching Max catch his fluke PB. 26, 27, 7 pounds clean. I seem to have a knack of being in the vicinity when that happens for people. Twenty twenty four was also a year of refinement of the single jig, specifically with the blade attachment, but also jigging deeper vertical water off of fishing piers. A scene I generally avoided in years past, but is now growing on me.
Do not go tight. Okay, reel up, reel up. Reel your line up. Thank you. Sorry about that. This year I also brought back a few catch and cooks on the channel. As longtime viewers would know, I am a chef by trade, and if you peek back into the archives, there are a ton of cooking and catch and cook videos. Hopefully I find the motivation to continue with a handful of these next year. Now, Sometime in July, I went on a skiff trip with my buddy Chris, something I haven't done in ages, and it was as physically uncomfortable and fun as I remember those trips to be. That's a fluke. Over here at this side. Up, up, lift, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Finally, 2024 was overall one of the slowest fluke seasons I've ever experienced. From South Jersey to Montauk, with the exception of a couple of bay spots, it was an off year for fluke by any measure. John Halkius of Jigging Jerks was nice enough to invite me onto his beautiful center console catamaran, and for those few weeks, the fishing even out there in the promised land of Montauk was spotty at best. It has since recovered and John and his crew has put a remarkable season together. But that's what pros do. They adapt and find the fish even when things are tough. Straight up a fluke in 100 feet. <laughs> and this, by the way, is the deepest single jig fluke I've ever caught. 3 8 ounce head, 100 plus feet of water. Small sample, but it's, it, it, it is a sample. Right. right. Now, that's not to say that I had a bad year of fluking personally, but I did have to put forth a lot more effort to find quality fish and stay on them. It used to be, go to any beach, pier, harbor, and you have a shot at a limit during the season. Not so in 2024. This year, if you were fishing the wrong areas, you probably caught 50, 60, 70 shorts for every keeper. And worse, if you're jiggling a high-low rig as opposed to using a bigger fish presentation. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to dial in your jigging technique when the fishing gets tough. The number of keepers are dwindling. And using proven methods like the light single jig gives you a better shot at moving one of those larger fish in the vicinity. Now all that said, for those of you who like numbers, I ended the season with 18 fluke over 23 inches. 4 fish over 6 pounds and 2 almost touching 8 on the 15 pound boga. With a good spread of keepers on the single jig, jerk bait, and crank baits. All but 3 or 4 keepers were released by the way. And speaking of releasing fish, it's more important than ever to take care of your shorts. Any fish you plan on releasing, the biggest problem I see is people waiting to set the hook when jigging. Please trust me when I say any fish that can't swallow your 6 inch jerk shad within one second of you feeling the bite is not only a short but a dink. Feel the bite, set the hook. Do not wait for them to eat it. If you're seeing more than 5% of your fish gut or gill hook, you're doing something wrong. Now, the season did end strong, or at least stronger than what July, August, and the early part of September would suggest, which is unfortunate as far as the channel goes, since 
people start losing interest around mid to late August. So I generally reserve the last few weeks in the season to experimenting with new techniques and refining old ones. You guys will see what I've been working on next year, so stay tuned. In the meantime, I'll have some review videos out, maybe some other species during the off season. I'll be working on new virtual lessons and updating the jigging lesson as well. Whatever you guys will be targeting next, blackfish, stripers, freshwater fishing, tight lines, thank you for the support over the last few months. I really do appreciate it. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ooh.